different video today. In this video, my buddy Brad is new to poker. He hit me up, he says, I wanna get better at the game. So I put together a list, my top five fundamentals about how to get better at poker if you are a new player. It's not for a seasoned professional or anything. Hey, a little refresh could help. But again, if you're brand new to poker, this video is gonna be perfect for you. Enjoy. The first one is the most important, so we all need to listen. This is the number one rule if I had to teach anything to anybody about poker. This is the most important thing. Rule number one, the golden rule. Your job as a poker player, Brad, is to get money into the pot when you have a good hand. That is the number one rule of the game. This sounds very basic, but if you go to your casino right now and you play a $50 daily tournament, there are not many people that understand that. Even with hands like pocket aces or pocket kings, they'll play it very safe. They'll put in just a small amount of chips and try to see the flop. They're way too risk adverse. And I'm telling you, Brad, if you play with your friends, the number one tip, if, if you have a good hand, what is your job? Absolutely. Get that money in the pot, the number one rule. So when you see these hands, these are the ultra premiums, you need to get excited. Again, this sounds basic, but this is great to cover. A lot of people at the casino, they just, they when they play, they don't understand. They don't understand that these are what we're looking for. These are the hands where we're gonna make a lot of money. So yeah. again, if we get these premiums, we are going to build the pot. We are going to raise preflop. We're gonna get some money in the middle. Okay. Let's go to rule number two. If we want to get money in the middle with our good hands, what do we want to do with the bad hands? Throw away the trash. Throw the away the trash. <laughs> Again, these hands are like stocks. We want to invest in the good stocks, the ones with potential, the good hands. Why do we want to deal with this shit? We don't. We don't want to mess around with these hands. Look, queen four offsuit, garbage. 8-5 offsuit, junk. All these hands I've highlighted here, these rules, there's some situations to play these hands, but as a general concept, we do not want to put the money in the middle when we have holdings this week. Look, we want to play in this top left of the quadrant. These are the good hands we want to play with. These bad hands, 10-do yeah. suited, junk. Jack-6 offsuit. And a lot of people, the way they play poker is like, oh, they want to see a flop. You know, they have a 10-7 offsuit. They want to, oh, maybe I can flop something big. It's a horrible, horrible, horrible idea. Just by avoiding these hands, you're going to be in a good place at your local home game. So rule number one and rule number two are very kind of similar link. Rule number one, when we have a good hand, we want to build the pot. Rule number two, when we have garbage, we just want to get out of the way, Brad. We want to avoid the garbage. Okay. All right, cool. Rule number three, do not limp. We don't want to do it. Again, just in case nobody knows what a limp is, I got a nice little visual graph here. So this is a common situation in poker. So as we can see here, this player has folded, this player has folded, this player has folded. The action is on us, right? You can see the small blind here, the big blind, the action is on us. So this is a very common spot in poker. Nobody has open raised the pot. Action is on us. Now the rule is do not limp. If we want to play this hand, Brad, we need to come in for a raise. We need to raise the pot. The call option for one big blind, we're just not gonna do it. So this, let's say I just called here for one big blind, we are never ever gonna do this. If I ever look at your hands, I never want to see this. If we play the ace three suited, we are gonna come in for a raise. This goes back to our common concept. Yes, so here we go. This is the way to do it. We are gonna come in for a raise. All these concepts kind of mash together, right? We're only gonna play 20% of hands. We're folding 80% of the garbage. We're only playing that 20% of the hands. So when we play those 20% of the hands, we do so with some aggression. We have some pep in our step, right? This decision to raise here, essentially we're announcing to the table, I have a hand that's worthy of winning the pot. If I do this, there's some great outcomes. First of all, they could all just fold. I have announced a raise. They could all just fall. I could win the pot pre-flop. That's really exciting. And let's say one of them calls. That's okay. We have pre-flop initiative. We are the one who have first announced to the table, I am coming in for a raise. So again, rule number three is we are never going to limp. So now we're going to talk about a concept. Brad, have you ever heard about position in poker? Yeah, a little bit for sure. That's probably yeah. a name, uh, something that's been thrown around. Let's talk about it so you understand what it is because... 
Position is very important in poker. And a lot of amateur players that you're going to find at your $20 home game, $50 daily tournament, they don't really understand this. Again, if you understand this, you're ahead of the game. And it's a very simple concept. Position is when you are post-flop, you always want to be the last one to act. You want to go last in the decision making. So let's take a look at this visual example here. You can see I have a hand and this person has a hand, right? We're post-flop. We're after the flop. He has a hand. He has a hand. Action goes left to the dealer button, right? So he has to act first. So every decision on the flop, turn, and river, there's three streets of post-flop action. Ghost is going to have to make a decision before I do. This is a very advantageous situation for me. You always want to go last. You always want to have position because you get to see what they do before you act. You get to gain some information. You get to see how they feel about the hand before, you know, for example, if they check here, maybe I could just bet and take it down. But eh, we could go into that more about how this operates. But again, the general rule is we want to play hands and we want to play pots in position. So here we are in position. This player is out of position. That's why the dealer button is so valuable in poker. Because if you are on the dealer button, you have guaranteed position on every single street, right? No matter what, everybody's going to have to make their decision before you do on the dealer button. So here the yeah. situation is pretty good for me because I have position on them. So yeah. So when you are looking to play with your buddies, you want to play in position. And rule number five, you definitely want to play with money you can afford to lose. This is cool. huge, you guys. It doesn't matter if you think you're good or bad or whatever. If you are playing with money that will have a negative effect on your life if you lose it. Let's say you have $200, you go to the casino and you're like, man, this is this is my, you know, God forbid, rent money, grocery money. You are messing around in an industry that is not appropriate for you at this time. I love poker. I, I've studied so much. I've played professionally for years. Where we, poker's given so much to me, but I've always attacked poker with an idea of just be careful. If you're doing fine or whatever, you got an income or whatever, go after it. But especially if you're new to these, this game, there might be some losing involved, especially at the early, the early moments of strategy. There might be some losing involved. So just be careful. Play with money that you can afford to lose. Before, you know, when I started playing poker, I was always very careful. I wrote down how much I had, how much I won, how much I lost. I always managed my money very carefully. If you lack that discipline, I would just be very careful when getting into this industry. Just be smart. Smart. Just be smart. And that is the five rules. The five rules to start you off with in summary. Brad, we should do some more. If, if you go play some hands or whatever, we should. there's definitely a lot more I could teach you. Rule number two, you know, we could have a second session, a third session. But in summary, these are five really good takeaways that you could learn. Wow, sounds, sounds good. I am uh, in all intent. I am all in. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, I'm really, I, I want to learn. I'm ready to learn. And, uh, I'd like to, you know, take take this to the uh, the next level, and and like I told you, we'll have to take down a, a bracelet with you, or be at the <laughs> table when you win it, or I win it, or, or whatever the case uh, may be. So, I mean, this is uh, a step in the right direction. Hey, to, man, absolutely. Small small steps. I I just think if you go, you know, if, if you have these things unlocked, if and you go play with your buddies or you know, casino at the turn a tournament at the casino, I think you're going to be in good advantage. Uh, in summary. Guys, top five reasons how to beat your friends at poker. Number one, the fundamental rule of the game is we want to play big pots with good hands. Number two, we want to fold the garbage. We're just going to fold 80% of our hands. We're only going to play about 20%. We are never, ever going to limp. That is a weak, passive play. If we're going to play the hand pre-flop, we're going to come in for a raise. Number four, position is key. Position is very important. You always want to be in position post-flop. And rule number five, just be responsible, especially if you're starting out. This is a beautiful game, um, but treat it with the respect that it deserves.